Greetings gamers, my name is Anto and today I want to talk to you about what I think is the one thing that you can do to make sure your long-term campaigns have the best chance for success as possible and that is the session zero. Now the purpose of a session zero is to set the stage and make sure everybody both GM and players is on the same page when it comes to their expectations for the game. Doing this is really important because it can ward off some problems that you might run into long term, but it's also just good general practice when you're going into a game and it helps you establish ground rules, have discussions on different elements of the game and just make sure that you're ready to have as good a time as possible. So the first thing that I think you should cover in a session zero is scheduling. The number one thing that is gonna kill your RPG campaign is scheduling and mismatch schedules. I've heard way more tales of people whose games have fizzled out because not everybody can make it on the same day at the same time versus there being some argument or rift or problem player or any other thing. It's almost always a scheduling problem that results in campaign death. Now, if you can, I really recommend setting a specific day and time for your sessions. In my home game, we play on Wednesday evenings and have done for the last like six years now. And setting that specific day and time even if it is every other week or once a month if you have a hard time for it it helps people get into the habit of setting that time aside as being time to play some rpgs together so with my group everybody knows wednesday night is pathfinder second edition so we're going to get together and we're going to play pf2 before that it was dnd night so everyone sets aside their wednesday night and makes that commitment that wednesdays is when we play if you can't commit to every week then every other week or once a month will work just make sure you're setting a consistent date if you can now if you're in a circumstance where you can't set a consistent date and it has to change maybe you work shifts or you have some other commitment that means that you can't commit to a single day every week or every other week in that case what i recommend doing is set up some kind of scheduling system if you're using discord for example have a channel dedicated to scheduling where on say the first of the month you could say here are the dates that i've got free this month when has everybody else got free and as soon as you get a day where everyone is free, you lock that day in, add it to your calendars, make sure everyone's on the same page as to when you're gonna play. The next thing that I think that you wanna talk about in your session zero is your specific table conventions. Not every table is the same. Some people are gonna enjoy things at the table that others don't. Some people are gonna accept things at the table that other people won't. And this is the perfect time to go over what you and your group think are acceptable. So for example, do you allow mobile phones at the table, even if it is just for reference? or are you a everybody puts their phone away kind of table. Another great thing to think about is food. Are you gonna be eating together when you play? If so, whose responsibility is it for sourcing the food, cooking the food, bringing the food? And then the same with drinks, particularly alcohol. Are you a dry table or do you allow people to drink? Are there any rules around drinking at the table? Because this is something that could potentially cause problems down the line if you have one or more players that are getting drunk every week and causing disruptions you want to be thinking about that ahead of time next you want to go over the game system and any specific house rules that you have so if you've already agreed on what system you're going to play then you probably can skip the game system step but i still think it's worthwhile going over any specific house rules as well as any key rules for that system that you don't want the players to forget so for example i recently started a pathfinder second edition campaign and in our session zero sat down and described some of the key differences between pf2 and dnd 5e which is what we were moving away from to remind the players of some of those core rules particularly when it comes to things like resting how you gain hp when you rest because that is really different to 5e as well as how the whole action economy works because those are some of the biggest differences between the systems i wanted to remind my players of those things just so that they have it fresh in their mind when they're making characters and thinking about the game a couple of universal house rules that I think it's good to establish is how are you going to handle rules disputes? So if you can't find a rule or don't know a rule off the top of your head, how are you going to handle resolving that in the moment? Typically, what I suggest to do is make a ruling on it and then figure it out after the fact. So if you're unsure on a rule, make a ruling as the game master and then go to look that up either 
during a break or after the session and then come back to the table next time you play to say, here is the actual rule, here's how we're gonna handle it moving forward. Another big thing that you might wanna consider is how to handle player on player combat and express that to the players because often in times of high emotional stress in the game, you might have a player who says, right, my character is gonna attack one of the other characters or do something hostile towards them. So being able to sit the players down and say, right, here are the circumstances when player on player contact would be allowed or if it is even allowed at all. At my table, I have a general rule. If both of the players are comfortable having their characters come into conflict or into combat, then they can do it. But if one of the players doesn't wanna do it, then it can't happen. I've taken all of the tips from this video and put them into a free session zero guide, which I'll link down in the description below. If you wanna get more free resources for being a game master and a player hit the subscribe button because we do videos like this all the time and that brings us nicely to the next thing that i think that you want to talk about and that's just general safety a lot of rpg adventures dip into horror tropes or phobia tropes or explore specific themes that might be upsetting to some of your players that's why i think it's important even if you've played with people for a long time just to reaffirm what are you interested in exploring in this space in the game that we're playing together a good way to do this in the first instance is ask people individually as well as asking the table some people might have some things that they're not comfortable sharing with the group and ask you to stay away from as the game master there is also the entire x card mechanic for being able to move on quickly from a scene if it makes a player uncomfortable. I'll leave some resources to that down in the description below. Next, I think that it's important to talk about adventure foundations. So as well as talking about the system that you wanna play, I think it's important to give your players an indication as to what kind of adventure you're gonna be running. So if you are running a module, give them the elevator pitch for the module. So let's say you're running Descent into Avernus for 5e. You say the whole premise of this adventure is your characters are going to go to hell and you're going to have to save the day and be big goddamn heroes while fighting a bunch of devils. Or if you're running Curse of Strahd, you'd say this is a really horror themed adventure. We're going to be touching on a lot of horror tropes. The purpose of several of these scenes in the adventure is going to be to make you feel uncomfortable and that might necessitate you having some extra kind of safety and and comfortable talks with the players. If you're running a homebrew adventure, it's important to kind of give your players some information, some buy-in to the world. So give them some high level information about the world they're gonna be adventuring in. Give them some indication as to the kinds of things they're gonna encounter in their initial adventures that you have in mind for that world so they can build appropriate characters and get into the right headspace. There's no use saying to your players, right, we're gonna be playing a high fantasy sword and sorcery kind of whimsical adventure and they all come with Mad Max inspired really rough and gritty characters. And then that brings us neatly into character creation. I do think that it is worth having all of your players come together to build their characters or at least start the process of building their characters together so they can bounce ideas off each other, they can discuss character concepts and they can talk about how their ability is going to strategize especially if you're playing quite a tactical combat focused RPG. Those strategies and the interplay between characters is going to be really important. This is also a good time to give your players the chance to impact the world building as well. So ask them where are your characters from? Who are they known to? Do they have any relationships with NPCs that you'd like to include? In the past I've asked my players to provide me with lists of NPCs that they know. Just three or four characters relevant from their background that I can then use to sprinkle into the world, build out relationships and make the characters feel like they are part of that world. You could go much much further with this there are entire mini games and full games dedicated to world building that you could collectively play to build out sections of the world that your players are going to campaign in. and then i think it's worth having an open floor section of your session zero somewhere where the players can bring up any concerns they have anything that you've missed they can ask any questions and giving them that kind of formal area to do that really helps set the tone as hey i as the game master i want to listen to you i'm open to feedback and it helps build a much more collaborative relationship between you and your players versus i am the game master i am god you are pawns in my world <laughs> that kind of vibe 
And those are the core things that I consider important to add into a session zero, but I'd love to know what you include in your session zero is what you do differently or what you would change. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're already in the process of running a campaign, check out this video for a mid campaign check-in, which can really help keep your campaign from running into the ground. But until next time, happy gaming.